this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. I'm Bishop William Byrne inviting you to radiate the light of Christ by making a gift to the annual Catholic Appeal. The ministries and agencies supported with your generosity help thousands of our neighbors throughout Western Massachusetts. On behalf of the people we serve, thank you. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Good morning and welcome to the Chalice of Salvation. I'm Sharon Rulier, coming to you from the Holy Spirit Chapel at St. Michael's Cathedral. On this 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time, Isaiah establishes the vineyard as the setting we will revisit throughout the parables in our readings today. From the first reading through the psalm and on to the gospel, we're given the chance to consider the wonderful vineyard that God has created for us and what has transpired in it over the course of centuries. May God's word inspire us to bear good fruit in the vineyard that is our world today. This weekend also marks Catholic Communication Sunday, when our diocese will take up the annual collection for the Catholic Communications Campaign. Through websites, social networks, television, radio, and print, this collection helps the church spread the gospel message through the media locally and nationally. Half of all donations collected will remain in the Diocese of Springfield to support local communications needs, such as this televised mass, Reel to Reel, our websites, and the Catholic Mirror magazine. Please consider making a donation through your parish to support our local efforts and those throughout the global church. Joining us as our celebrant this morning is Father Peter Salik, Vicar General for the Diocese of Springfield and Pastor of Immaculate Conception Parish in Indian Orchard. Father Peter will be joined at the altar by his parish deacon, Gerald Sheehan, as well as Deacon David Southworth of the Office of the Propagation of the Faith. After our liturgy, Deacon Southworth will speak with Carolee McGrath on the upcoming World Mission Sunday. Our Mass intention today is for the living and deceased members of Immaculate Conception Parish. And in our congregation this morning are members of the youth group and the Children of Mary group from Immaculate Conception. Joe Juck also joins us from the parish as our music minister. We welcome one and all. This morning we send our best wishes to those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries today and throughout the coming week. Special happy birthday greetings go out to Joseph Lukasik of Chicopee as he marks his 90th birthday. On behalf of his wife Dorothy, we send our best wishes on this special milestone. And congratulations to our co-worker Nick Morganelli and his wife Jean who recently celebrated their 25th anniversary. Nick recreated his hot air balloon proposal for the occasion, which looks beautiful. And as always, we are mindful of all those who are ill or homebound, especially our viewers who are watching this morning from their hospital rooms, nursing homes, and extended care facilities. Please know you're always in our prayers. And we will be placing the names that you, our viewers, have sent in to us for our Book of Remembrance at communion time this morning. Included in our remembrance this morning is Father Anthony Cullen, who passed away at the age of 73 on October 1st in his home country of Wales. Father Cullen came to the Diocese of Springfield in 2004, serving at St. Jerome Parish in Holyoke and as chaplain to the St. Patrick's Day Parade Committee, and later as pastor at Holy Cross Parish in Springfield and St. Joseph Parish in Shelburne Falls before his retirement. Father Cullen will be laid to rest in Wales. May his soul and the soul of all our faithful departed rest in the peace of our risen Lord. 
In our Chalice feature this morning, Kathy Harrington will bring us the harrowing story of a Pittsfield nurse and her family who were in Maui in the aftermath of the wildfires. Please stay tuned for that inspiring story. We now join Joe Juck for the opening hymn of gathering as we greet our celebrant, Father Peter Salik, and together celebrate the 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time. God, we praise you. God, we bless you. God, we name you, Sovereign Lord, mighty King, who angels worship. Father, by your church adored, our creation shows your glory. Heaven and earth draw near your throne, singing holy, 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 Lord of hosts and God alone. True apostles, faithful saints who set their world ablaze, martyrs once unknown, unheeded, join one growing song of praise. Where your church on earth confesses one majestic trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, God our In the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. With Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I greatly sin in my thoughts, in my words, have done a fate to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, blessed Mary the Virgin, all the United saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May mighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. In excelsis Deo, et in terra pax omnibus, ore pollutatis, plata amus te, benedici mulus te, adoratus te, glorificatus te, gratias agimus te, Let us pray. 
Almighty, ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer doesn't dare to ask for our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me now sing of my friend, my friend's song concerning of, vine of his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He spaded it, cleared it of stones, and planted the choicest vines. Within it, he built a watchtower and hewed it a wine press. Then he looked for a crop of grapes, but what it yielded was wild grapes. Now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to, to do for my vineyard that I had not done? Why, when I looked for the crop of grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? Now I will let you know what I mean to do with my vineyard. Take away its hedge, give it to the grazing, break through its wall, let it be trampled. Yes, I will make it a ruin. It shall not be pruned or hoed, but overgrown with thorns and briars, I will command the clouds. Not to send rain upon it, the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. And the people of Judah are his cherished plant. He looked for judgment, but see, bloodshed. For justice, but hark the outcry. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. A vine from Egypt you transplanted. You drove away the nations and planted it. It put forth its foliage to the sea. It shoots as far as the river. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Why have you broken down its walls so that every passerby plucks its fruit? The boar from the forest lays it waste, and the beasts of the field feed upon it. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Once again, O Lord of hosts, Look down from heaven and see. Take care of this vine and protect what your right hand has planted, the son of man whom you yourself made strong. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Then we will no more withdraw from you. Give us new life and we will call upon your name. O Lord, God of hosts, restore us. If your face shine upon us, then we shall be saved. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses an understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honor honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. from the world, says the Lord. 
to go and bear fruit that will remain. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And your very spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the servants, and one they beat, another they killed, and a third they stoned. Again, he sent other servants, more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, thinking, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him, he will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the proper times. Jesus said to them, did you ever read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? By the Lord has this been done and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore, I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. About 20 years ago, when I was a senior at high school, uh, over 20 years ago, I remember I was asked by the teacher and the principal to go and help younger children with different subjects. And for me it was to go and teach young Christopher, who was already in the fourth grade, a little bit of science, because he had problems at school with science. And I wasn't perfect in that as well, but I learned a little bit more when I was asked to go and teach him. And for a few, after a few visits in that home, I said to myself, something is wrong in that house. And finally, the grandmother of Christopher came to me and she said, well, I want you to know what happened. And I said, I don't need to know. And finally, she said that you have to know that Christopher's father is in jail because he was a thief and he was stealing a lot of stuff and he got the sentence for 10 years to be in the prison. Christopher's mother passed away when Christopher was only five years old. And I am raising him as a grandchild. And he's having difficult time at school because no one knows his story and his life. And I went back later and I spoke a little bit with Christopher and he was getting better in his science and I was improving myself with that too. And at some point when that year finished, he came to me and he said, thank you for being with me here and bringing to me hope that I have no more anxiety and I do not feel that I am abandoned at school. I trust in myself and I believe in myself. And I don't know what I did. I think just my presence to be with him over there made him feel that way. That's what we heard today in the gospel passage right on the end. The stone that builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. Jesus is speaking of himself in the Gospel passage. He's presenting to us exactly that prophets before him and John the Baptist were rejected by others. And he himself was rejected by others too. By all of those people, they know the scripture. They were teaching in synagogues. They rejected him as well. He's talking about himself, as we know from different gospel passage, when Mary and Joseph were looking for a place for him to be born, 
no one invited them. And that's what Jesus is referring to himself today, but also he's saying to us, if you feel that way, that you are being rejected by others, you have to have trust and faith in yourself. Because as we heard in the second reading, have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. About a few years ago, I received an email from Christopher and saying to me, of course, he knows I'm a priest now. I wasn't a priest that way back then. And he said, Father, I have to share with you a good news. And I answered him back and said, what is it? And he said, I just finished my study and I am about to go and receive PhD in science. And I said, this is very amazing. But that's the proof that even though sometimes they feel a little bit of anxiety, if we put our trust completely into God with thanksgiving and make our request to him, everything is possible with his help. And as we celebrate this Columbus Day weekend, I think now is a time for us to not only enjoy the change of season when you see the leaves turning orange or red, but also during this longer weekend to think about ourselves, maybe sit down quietly for a few minutes without being worried about anything. Just enjoy the change of the season and say to yourself, what I can do in my life to make things better? What I can do to make others feel better? Can I put any kind of busyness and anxiety away just for five minutes and enjoy what is being created? Because later here in that same second reading we heard, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. And let's think during this weekend about those things around us, making us a better people without any worries or any kind of anxieties or stress, but just to thank God for the creation and for one another. Because all of us, we are being called to be the cornerstones in our societies in our neighborhood and in our families. We just have to put our trust in God and he will give it to us, the trust in ourselves. Amen. Please stand now and let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial of the Father. For him all things were made, for his men and for his salvation. He came down from heaven, where the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For his sake he was crucified in Pontius Pilate, he suffered, death, and was buried, rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess on Baptist for the forgiveness of sins, and I looked forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. St. Paul advises the Christian community in Philippi to make their request known to God. As a Christian community ourselves, let us do the same. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the church that we may lovingly and steadfastly tend the Lord's vineyard, bearing fruit for the benefit of God's kingdom, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our man. prayer. We pray that elected officials may lead us to work to eradicate poverty, unemployment, and injustice, so that all may share in the riches of the nation. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our Lord. prayer. Pray for indigenous people here and across the world, especially those who have suffered mistreatment or hostility for generations, that they may be given respect and dignity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear Lord, our Lord. prayer. Pray for those who have thwarted the work in the vineyard or mistreated those laboring for the Lord, that they may be moved to remorse and contrition. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear, hear our Lord. prayer. Pray for a blossoming of ministries at our parishes, our diocese, and elsewhere, so that we may produce good fruit for the kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Pray for faith communities in the farthest frontiers, especially those living and ministering in the Amazon region, that through us God will secure the rights of his chosen ones and see to it that justice is done for them speedily. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear Lord, our prayer. We especially remember in prayer this day the living and deceased members of Immaculate Conception Parish Community for whom this Mass is being offered, and the names we will enter into today's Book of Remembrance. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. God of all kindness, you have given us the mission to be stewards of your creation. Guide us in its loving care. Grant us hope for the future and empower us to work without tiring for the cornerstone of the kingdom, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your grace and glory of his name for our good and the of Church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service. Graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift the of the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration as we acclaim. Let me 
Indeed, Holy Lord, the founder of all holiness, make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending their spirit upon them like the dew for, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be proud for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. It's the real faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection, we offer your Lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worth to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that if the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you, his Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command and from by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespass as we forgive those who trespass. Lead us now into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. <laughs> Miss Heaven and Gobis, on you 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy, turn in my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to possess you within my soul. Since I am unable at this moment to receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Oh. 
Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you to everyone for being with us here. Thank you to Deacon Dave Southworth, who is the Director of Propagation of the Faith for the Diocese, Deacon Jerry, who serves at the Immaculate Conception, but also is a Director of Catholic Cemeteries of the Diocese of Springfield, to our altar service, Dominic and Landon, to our lectors here, Joe, for music, and most of all, this Mass, in attendance, we have our Immaculate Conception Parish in Indian Notre Youth Group and Children of Mary. And thank you for taking the time to be with us here today, and have a blessed week. The Lord be with you. May mighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. On our life's journey, as we seek purpose and connection, we are called, called to place our faith and trust in something greater than our own understanding. We are called by someone who already loves us and offers himself to us, Jesus Christ, his body given daily, his blood poured out for us. We never journey alone in life. Through the Eucharist, we encounter his real presence and others who share our faith. Together, we become one with him in his very flesh. And when we bring his presence out into the world, we can be light for others. This is the gospel call to make disciples of all nations, laying down our lives for others. The time is now to unite our hearts with his for the life of the world. And I'm joined by Deacon David Southworth, who directs the Office of the Propagation of Faith for the Diocese of Springfield. Thanks so much for joining us today. Great to be here, Carolee, thank you. Let me start with your title and your office. What is the Propagation of Faith? So the Propagation of the Faith is one of the societies of the Pontifical Mission Societies, and the Propagation of the Faith helps connect us to missionaries in really third world countries, Asia, Africa, India, China, as we give them our prayers and our support. Many people will know it from the visit of a missionary priest once a year to local parishes here in the Springfield Diocese and all around the United States. So this is under the Pope, correct? Is that Correct, it's part of the pontifical mission societies, pontifical meaning pope, and so the pope is interested in encouraging us all to share the faith, of course, both locally and worldwide, and so this is an effort to help 1,100 dioceses around the world that are fledgling, just getting going, and don't have the resources to pay for their own seminaries, their own priests, and maybe their, even their bishop. 
So World Mission Sunday is October 22nd. There will be a collection there. Tell me a little bit about that. Those, those monies will go uh, to the New York office of the Pontifical Mission Society, the propagation of the faith, and then they'll go to Rome and they uh, distribute them worldwide. They give like $700 a year to every seminarian in a third world country. Uh, and they'll help uh, Christians and Catholics specifically who are in countries that still have a dictator, have uh, where it's maybe against the law to practice your faith. Why is this so important to consider the universal church? Because a lot of people might say, listen, we have so much need right here in our own neighborhoods and we're giving to this charity and to this charity. Why should we give um, you know, on World Mission Sunday? Sure, well, of course, it's really about animating our baptism, our graces. Everyone who's baptized is called to go and share the gospel and we need to share it locally as well as overseas. The United States uh, still has our challenges with faith, but we are a relatively wealthy church and uh, area of the world still. The United States was a mission territory until 1908. Wow. The Pontifical Mission Society started in the early 1800s. They're 200 years old, and the United States needed help in the 1800s and all the way up to 1908, we got money to, to help us get up on our feet and get going. So it's, it's, there's a lot of good uses for our money, but it's part of the, the full expression of our being Catholic. And I think the fact that you had mentioned that this is helping persecuted Christians and Catholics around the world as well, because I think we do take that for granted here in the United States. Uh, just that we have the freedom um, to religious, uh, religious freedom, excuse me. And so once again, the um, collection is October 22nd. And um, if people want to learn more, they can go to iObserve. And there is a link there uh, with more information. Thank you so much for joining us today, Great. Deacon. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Sharon, we're going to send it back to you. Thanks, Carolee. And again, the collection for World Mission Sunday is in parishes October 22nd. It was the perfect storm, drought conditions and high winds at 70 miles an hour from a hurricane passing Hawaii created the deadly combination for fierce wildfires on the island of Maui on August 8th. Within hours, flames spread faster than people could escape the fires. Well, now two months later, the embers have finally been extinguished. 115 people perished in the fires, 385 remain missing, and 2,200 buildings, including homes, businesses, and schools were destroyed. As the fires began to burn, a family from Pittsfield was already flying to Maui for a vacation to visit relatives. Their vacation quickly began a mission to help family and strangers through the unfolding nightmare. Kathy Harrington traveled out to Pittsfield where this family shared their story. These are the images of Lahaina the Nagata family carried in their hearts as their journey to Hawaii began on August 8th. But before takeoff from LAX, Nicole's aunt called with news. That there was fires in multiple different areas on the island and that evacuation orders would be in place by the time we landed. Wildfires can happen on Maui. This time, a hurricane passing offshore sent 70 mile an hour winds to the island. But she did say that it was blazing in multiple areas on the island, which is different. That's not something that's typical. And then that paired with the severity and the velocity of the winds uh, really sort of complicated the situation. As the plane descended into Maui, Nicole saw the flames. We could see them blazing from the plane. Our plane landed directly over when, when the fires were escalating, but by morning time, so we landed about 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, by six o'clock in the morning the next day, Lahaina's entire community was gone, was burned to ashes. In daylight, the magnitude of the devastation was apparent. A registered nurse, Nicole met her husband, Lee, a native islander, while working at Maui Memorial Medical Center years before the couple moved to Pittsfield, where I met up with her. The Nagata family belongs to St. Mark Parish. We saw 
the level of devastation was, we need to go. But my husband looked at me and said, this is, this is my home, this is my community, this is my family, and they need us now more than ever. And so at that point, we said, this is no longer a family vacation, and this is going to be a mission for us. Nicole notified the hospital that she could help with the influx of patients. But not many patients arrived because there, um, many didn't survive. Describing it as a blowtorch, flames fueled by the heavy winds trapped firefighters and first responders, forcing them to shelter in place. One road leads to the central portion of the island from the west side, leaving no way to drive out of the fire zone. When things escalated out of control, there's only one lane, one road to exit the area uh, that was impacted the most. As you can see from a lot of the photos, cars melted to the ground and doors open and families fleeing into the water. Um, they weren't able to escape. Abandoned cars added to the gridlock when people were told to run to the water. Stories of um, people that treaded water for eight hours before the Coast Guard picked them up. Uh, stories of young and healthy men who ran back to help elderly people that were in wheelchairs, um, holding them on their back in the water and treading water with other people on their back, keeping them alive. Islanders with boats joined the Coast Guard to rescue those stranded in the water. Reports of missing people soared and the death toll climbed. While helicopters fought the remaining flames with water drops, forces on the ground began to search for the missing. In 48 hours, more than 28,000 tourists left the island, so the focus could be on recovery efforts and the limited resources could be for the residents. But since tourism is the business of Lahaina, Nicole says it's a double tragedy. Many people lost their homes, their jobs, their cars. They, they don't have you know, any way to support their family anymore. So it's, it's really a tragedy on so many different levels. It's an island that is reliant on tourism, but is so deeply shattered by this devastation, this tragedy, that it doesn't really feel like an appropriate place to be having a vacation. Nicole, Lee, and their 13-year-old daughter got to work, and the needs of the community changed day by day. If that meant bringing clothing donations to shelters, that's what we did. If it meant bringing non-perishable items to food banks, that's what we did. If it meant offering free babysitting services to first responders on the island so that they could focus on recovery efforts, that's what we did. We can run away or we can show up for people who need us. For families who lost everything, some help came from the Amazon wish lists Nicole and her friends created. After spreading the word to the mainland, toiletries, diapers, detergent, and air purifiers were sent to newly created at-home distribution centers, then into the hands of people in need. Everybody can do something, and for people that maybe don't have the financial means, you can say a prayer for the people of Maui. They need your prayers now more than ever. Proof now prayers again. will be heard is just two blocks from the rubble of the waterfront. The Maria Lanaquila Catholic Church was untouched by the inferno that consumed its neighborhood. I think it's powerful because it's almost like God knew that the people would need a place to go and to start to rebuild. The church still stands. In Pittsfield, I'm Kathy Harrington. Thanks, Kathy. And you can make a donation to help those impacted by the fires by making your donation to the Diocese of Maui. You can find a link on our website at diospringfield.org. Our sincere thanks to Father Peter Salik for celebrating our Mass and to Deacons Gerald Sheehan and David Southworth for assisting. We're also grateful to the members from Immaculate Conception Parish, including music minister Joe Juck, who joined us in our chapel this morning. A few events coming up around the diocese. 
Father Robert Miskell, parochial vicar at St. Joseph's Parish in Pittsfield, is launching a new adult formation series called Truths, Traditions, and Treasures of the Church. The series will explore the mysteries of the Catholic Christian faith, its devotions, and traditions. The meetings will be on Monday evenings from 7 to 8 p.m. in the North Chapel at St. Joseph's Church, 414 North Street in Pittsfield. The Fairview Knights of Columbus Council 4044 will hold a candlelight living rosary service at the Castle of the Knights on Tuesday, October 17th at 7 p.m., led by Council Chaplain Father Dennis Scavira. The ceremony features a live music program and light refreshments will be served afterwards. Again, that's at 7 p.m. Tuesday, October 17th at the Castle of Knights Memorial Drive in Chicopee. And the Knights of Columbus Reverend Thomas A. Shea Council 11178 will present a mystery comedy and dinner show on Saturday, October 21st from 5 to 8 p.m. at Our Lady of the Lake Church, 224 Sheep Pasture Road in Southwick. Performed by the Murder Mystery Company, tickets are $45 a person and the proceeds benefit the Knights of Columbus Charitable Works. Tickets are limited, so please call or text 413-569-8440 or email dinnertheater at kofc11178.org. Author, international speaker, and EWTN television host Donna Marie Cooper O'Boyle will lead a half-day retreat at St. John the Evangelist Parish on Saturday, October 28th from 9 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. at the Parish Center at 833 Main Street in Agawam. She will present Eucharistic history and teaching and share secrets from many devoted saints. In addition, Cooper O'Boyle will have her books and DVDs available for purchase and autographing. The cost is $45 per person, and you can register online at stjohnagawam.com or by calling the parish office Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at 413-786-8105. And before we leave you, one special announcement. When we published the fall edition of The Catholic Mirror, we had planned to celebrate Brother Terence Scanlon's years of service in the diocese in early November. But we will be rescheduling that to a later date as he will be recovering from surgery. We will announce the new date in the near future. And Brother Terry continues to be most grateful for all of your prayers and best wishes. And I invite you to tune in to the Chalice of Salvation next Sunday at 10 a.m. as we welcome Father Dan Pakalik, pastor of Our Lady of the Blessed Sacrament Parish in Westfield and director of pro-life activities for the diocese as our mass presider. That's next Sunday morning at 10 a.m., the Chalice of Salvation, your weekly spiritual connection. Thank you for spending your Sunday morning here with us on Chalice. May you be blessed with a happy and healthy week ahead.